Hello and welcome to another Coastal Crafts haul. There goes a large truck of some kind. Um, so I picked things up from a few different places. Crafter's Companion, um, Craft Stash and Amazon. So I will do Crafter's Companion first. So I picked up a few bits, I don't tell you the prices or anything, um, but unfortunately they did send me, I've got three tri-blends and they did send me the wrong tri-blend. So I was after, I've already got this one, so I'm hoping they might send me the right one. Um, but in addition to that one, I did pick up two that were the ones that I wanted. They actually sent me the right ones and it was buy two, get one free. So that's why I bought three of them, but I got to add to my little collection. The fair skin blend and the orange blend um, and I can show you. So I do have lots of pens and the reason I get the tri -bend pens is because in addition to the ones I've already got, it's because I'm kind of lazy and the good thing about the tri blends is they're the same as the ordinary Spectrum Noir but you don't have to think about um, your blending whatsoever. You can just pick up one pen and automatically do your blending from dark to light. So that's why, even though I already have lots of pens, this is the um, fair skin tone. I still like to get the tri blends. So you can see. So nice and pale. I'm, as you can tell, I'm a very pale person. So when I go for skin tones, I just go for pale because it kind of matches me. And that's the orange because I didn't have any orange. That's a nice orange. So there we go. And hopefully I will, um, hopefully they'll send me the one that I wanted. So I've already got the pale pink blend. Hopefully I'll get the darker ones to go with that so that I will have the rest of those. So I do like tri blends and I do recommend them. Um, for lazy people like me. So the other things I bought um, were some storage bits, which I think I'm going to show you now. Um, I'll have to take you off so you can see how I've already got absolutely loads of pens. So basically this pen storage, and I already had lots of them, but I wanted some extra ones to put down here, to put over there, to put up here, just to store extra pens. So I've got another one of these because these were reduced. It doesn't tell me on here, but I think they're about eight pounds. Um, for six and as you can see I've got loads of these so you can tell for pen storage they're the ones I go for the Spectrum Noir marker pen storage and then if I scoot along you can see that I also picked up the ink pad storage one and I really like this it was going to be for I mean it's designed for the Spectrum Noir inks and then I found out that it worked really well for my Distress Oxides so I decided to put them on there and as you can see I've still got some left over, so I'm now very tempted next time it goes on offer to get another one of the ink pad storage, but fits perfectly for the distressed ink pads. And I will stick some little labels on there to show which colours it is. Let's try and get the camera back in. There we go. So yeah, um, the, the ink pad storage, I think was nearly eight pounds as well, seven pounds something. And of course, if you if you buy lots from Crafters Companion, you might have a better discount. I try not to buy too much from that from Crafters Companion, so I don't have a brilliant discount. Um, but there we go. And the other thing I picked up, so six ninety nine was um, a pack of so all three for six ninety nine in a pack were these uh, mixed media dies. So the thing was, when I saw them, I thought, oh, that's a really good size. I might get them and I might even try doing some patchwork using them. And then I got them and I was like, oh, they're quite a bit smaller <laughs> than I thought they were going to be. So they're all quite a bit smaller. Um, but it doesn't matter. I mean, as I say, they were technically only £2 or something each. So maybe I was expecting a bit much for them to be that size. Um, I've not done any patchwork before, so I will have to have a little go but they'd also be quite interesting as shapes the good thing about these media dies is they're thicker so you can cut chipboard and stuff and sometimes it's nice to have some chipboard elements like that wouldn't it make a nice um what do you call it <laughs> like a like a raised sentiment uh frame kind of thing and the little parallelograms there kind of cool and i guess that's a scarlet shale actually that could be quite nice 
um, out of chipboard for like some kind of seaside shell embellishment. So yeah, they were, they turned out to be smaller than I thought they were going to be. And the reason why that's a downer is because I'm thinking the smaller they are, the more I've got to cut out and the more I've got to sew. Um, <laughs> but there we go. I've not opened any of these things up or tried them yet because I have been... Um, I know I keep saying oh, I'm going to work in school with the key workers' children and they kept changing all the rotors around. I have actually been in now. Um, and yeah, it was, it was good fun, actually. We did, we did all these different sports. We did badminton with them and they wanted to do football and they wanted to go on the bikes and they did some craft and they went on the computers. They're having a, um, a great time. Completely not thinking about coronavirus. It's like a, a different world when you go into school. It's like none of that um, matters at all and you're just back to normality so I've not had a chance to play with anything but I will do this weekend um yes yeah, so that's what I picked up from crafters companion then from craft stash they were doing the deal where you got five pounds off for whatever reason they were just doing some five pounds off when you bought stuff I was trying to think, what does it say? Yeah, £5 and the 20p was just the points because I spend my points every single time. Um, so I, they don't tend to build up. But that's what I picked up. And you can see the prices there. But um, just to remind me. So one of the things I wanted to get was this stamp set because I've got the dies for these tonic ones and they had them on sale for £3.58. I thought I'd pick up these stamps. So I've now got the matching stamps to go with the um, flower dies. Can't see it very well in there. Let's take it out. So, yeah, that's what they will look like. I think it might be nice to have a go. And actually, that stamp's really pretty. And they're good quality stamps. That is nice quality stamps, actually. I haven't really got tonic stamps before, but I'm impressed with how chunky. That's nice and chunky photopolymer. So, yeah, that those two match up with the um, dies. And these are like extra fancy bits to go around, which are really pretty. So... That's very nice in the sale. So after I got that, I was like, right, what else have I wanted for a while? And one of the things was this paper discovery. It's the embossing folder that cuts out in the middle. And I've seen various people use this, the Underwater World Pebble Pond Cut Embossing Folder. Oh, that's what it coordinates with. But yeah, it basically cuts out this shape. So I thought this would be really nice, not only for pond scenes, but I would do this for my um, like coastal seaside scenes because it makes me think of rock pool seaside stuff and obviously you're cutting out that gap so it can be a frame that's all going to be embossed or it could be a shaker card six by six nice and big so that was five pounds so now i don't know i think these prices might be after they've taken the discount off so i think it might have been a little bit more than that but they obviously took the discount off so maybe maybe ignore the prices <laughs> gets confusing doesn't it um and the other thing that I had wanted for a while was from the Crafters Companion, the Enchanted Doorway from their fairy collection. Um, I'm really looking forward to cutting this out and it does makes a door that opens up and it'd just be so cute to go with them. Um, some fairy stamps and things. Look how pretty. So cute. So I'm going to tell you the price because I don't think those prices are very accurate. Um, and then this one was in the sale of Sizzix stuff. And the reason I got this, because I've never even looked at this die set before, but I'm absolutely in love with the one that they have, the latest collection from Crafters Companion. They're really big butterfly. It's gorgeous. It's a layering one, but it's £20. And this one says here £5.26. So it's probably about six or seven pounds, you know, if you include that discount that I got there, which is a lot cheaper. And it's going to do something similar, slightly smaller, but um, I don't know. I felt like I could justify it. So I will have a play with that in a minute and try and stick some photos at the end. But see, so you layer. And that should look really pretty. And I've seen some really fantastic projects with the um, Crafters Companion one. So I'm hoping I can do something similar with that one, but slightly cheaper. And the third thing I got, I just picked this one up because it was on sale. Um, and you know I've got one of these already, these mixed media dies by Tonic, and I really like them. I've got one of the frame ones already, and this is a slightly different shaped frame. Oh, they really, they really stick that down. I <laughs> think the postman's going to steal it. Oh, I don't know. Postman's not even interested in crafting, I don't think. Um, well, 
that's not going to last as a pocket because that is not going to open otherwise. Anyway, I'm going to transfer it into something different because that is not an easy packaging to open. But I was determined to open it. So what I like about these is I don't cut them in fabric. Um, these mixed media dies. This is for cutting in like, when I say chipboard, it's got to be thin chipboard. This is only about one millimetre thick. I mean, two millimetre, it's obviously not going to cut, but um, cardboard and things like that. And then, you know, paint it up stick it on your project you've got a really nice raised frame and I also like these as well for I can't think what you say you know for putting a sentiment or something on but having it raised up they're just really nice and I've got the one I've got is a different shape this one's a rectangular shape so yeah I thought I would get that so that's what I got from craft stash very exciting gonna play with that later um the other bits I got from Amazon not quite so exciting Actually, this came through from eBay, some more of these and um, their little wax wax melts. So I think I paid I think about £253-ish. You get 100 pieces in there. Really like that colour, so I shall be playing with those later. And I don't know where this came from, but Mr Coastal Crafts bought me this because he thought it would be safer for me for lighting the... See? <laughs> for lighting the candles when I do the wax melts. I just thought that just looks even more dangerous. Who knows? I'll give it a go and hopefully I don't burn the house down. Um, and following on from, I've seen um, Happy Mail Queen and Scrap Diva um, all here on YouTube. Go and check them out. Love their channels. Pick these up from Amazon and they're the little popper things. I'm sure you've seen them buy it. So it comes with this and it was $10.99, I think. And you get all these different colours. So basically you're making a pop fa popper fastening. And they're going to use it on lots of paper projects, but also here's one I've put on my little bag. What I like about it is it is, they're really easy. Well, once you've got the hang of it, it took a bit of fiddling out and I realised you have to trim these down slightly um, to make sure they're the right thickness for the material you're using it for. And you've got to put enough pressure on this. But once you get the hang of it, it will be quite a simple fastening. And what I liked is that they're... Um, it's quick and easy to do. You don't need a hammer and they come in all these different colours. So I will be using them on paper projects mostly, but also probably on some fabric projects. They're not really strong. They're made of cheap plastic. You know, they're, it's ten ninety nine for Amazon for the tool and all of these. So it's not brilliant quality, but perfectly fine for any of our paper crafting projects. I probably wouldn't use it on a dress or something because I'd be worried with all my moving around that I do, that it might break. You know, I don't think I'd use it on clothing that I would wear, but I'd definitely use it on bags and purses. Um, I know people have used them on duvet covers even, maybe. Bibs for babies. Um, and little journals and things. So yeah, that was 10 99 for that. So that is exciting. And this isn't exciting, but I'm gonna show you anyway. I was like, right, I want some elastic. I want to make <laughs> a pair of leggings. And I don't think I read this correctly. But this was eleven ninety nine, which is quite a bit, for, but it's a massive roll that will last forever. Um, but now I've got it, I'm like, that's that's wider than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be that wide, and it would make the perfect to make the top of a pair of leggings. Um, yeah, obviously more than one pair of leggings. I wasn't, um, but I'm hoping I can maybe cut it down. I think that'd be fine for the top of a pair of leggings, but for for some other projects and things, I'm hoping I can cut that down. But elastic is in short supply at the moment because everyone's making face masks. And I did show you a picture of the face mask that I've made because I did have some thinner elastic left. But actually, to be honest, that going around the back of you would be more comfortable anyway. So you could use that. But that's that's not a, a great deal. I mean, if that's what you want, that's a good deal. But eleven ninety nine, you need to really like elastic. That will last me for the rest of my life. But I will I will use it for skirts and sometimes I do fancy dress and when we do um, plays and things for children, I'd make them little costumes and things. So it, I will be using it, but it wasn't quite, I thought it was half the size. Anyway, <laughs> that's enough for me rambling on. I'm going to have a get cutting out some of these dies and things, and I will stick some photos on after this. So stay tuned and see what they look like. And yeah, let me know if you've been doing some crazy shopping. <laughs> speak to you soon. Bye. So I decided that I would just pop back on and show you some of these things that have been cut out rather than doing photos. So I've had a bit of a play. Um, so I'd already bought the Dainty Daisies, Daisies die set. Well that actually came in one of their grab bags 
um, and I've shown you that I picked up the stamps. So I've had a go at, let's have a look at these ones first. So just doing it in ordinary cardstock and I do really like the way it's added the veins onto the petals. So basically that's what, what the stamp was there for. Um, and I think that's a really nice effect. Obviously I could try, I might try and see whether you can do that on Fomarin as well. And that's the effect you get on the, for that one. Um, and then of course it has these other stamps that don't come with dies, because of course these are more for forming flowers, um, but obviously it would look pretty in the corner and then you'd maybe have your flowers around as well. So that would make quite a pretty card really, wouldn't it? They're lovely quality stamps. And I've added a bit of tonic sparkles because I just can't resist. So yeah, I'm happy with those. So I had a little play with that set. Um, what I've had to play with pretty much everything. Just trying to fiddle around with it all now. So I also had a play. Where on earth ha it has gone, I don't know. But my paper discovery, um, the embossing folder that cuts out. And you can see, so it goes this way up. You can see there and i've also used that frame that's that hunky dory frame and i love that it's so easy you just cut out four pieces bing bang bong and you've got yourself a cute frame um i got all these acetate pieces from buying those storage pockets so i was trying to get them to i thought i really like the effect of having it on top but it's not quite the right size so i might see what i can do about that for next time um but yeah so it's meant to be a little, little fish pond that i've done there just keep swimming and in case you're interested, those fish are the Hero Arts layering stamps and they're gorgeous. I love Hero Arts. So yeah, it's quite cool. And I think I'm also going to have a go at doing that maybe in like a yellowy sort of sandy colour and making it a beach one. So that is that one. So I'm just trying to find where on earth I have put the little fairy door. Oh, it's on the floor. Here we go. So the Nature's Garden fairy door one. I've popped onto here and had a little accident over here, so just ignore that. Um, I was going to do a fairy and then I just absolutely, I've got some Stamping Bella fairies. I've also got some of these garden, little garden girls from Stamping Bella and that, she's just so beautiful. And at the moment, the bluebells have come out where we are um, and they're just, they're one of my favourite flowers. So we keep looking for them every time we go out for walks. So she is just gorgeous and I've got the dye. <laughs> But I love these, all these Stamping Bella girls, the perfect height for the door. So, and I've also put that on a bit of foam to give it a bit of dimension. And a little doorknob. I think it's really cute. And that's another Crafters Companion die. With a bit of glitter. So that's that card. Um, I had a go at cutting out the butterflies from Sizzix. Everything seems to have just been put on top of one another. This is my amazing organisation. Um, I think these are gorgeous. Last night, quite late, I randomly decided to put some Nouveau drops on. And I think I kind of regret that. But um, look how gorgeous is that. So you could have it flat like that or you could have it dimensional. They're really pretty and they're really good size as well. So I've seen a gorgeous project. And this is somebody else who has done it where they've put it on like um kebab skewers like on sticks and they made it in different colors and they put it in a plant pot and it just looks beautiful not this butterfly but the crafter's companion one but oh, that's gorgeous butterfly isn't it quite impressed with that that means that i don't feel that i need the um crafter's companion one fortunately at 20 pounds until it maybe goes on sale so with this one i was just using some cardboard and mr coastal Crafts was um cutting up some cardboard so i thought oh i just have a go at cutting and see this is what I like them they just make these really chunky frames because you can cut out cardboard and thin chipboard and stuff and that's just a hunky-dory bit and that's a bit from the middle but could be used for something else um, and I just think they look really nice I mean that makes a card in itself if you stick it on something but if I get some photos how nice is that for scrapbooking so I think they're really cool for adding that dimension um, and then of course I have been playing with these. So you were probably watching it and thinking, 
I know what those are for. And I went on and I had to search around and I did manage to find the video on these dies from um, Sarah Davies. It's an older one. And it turns out it's for the English country paper piecing patchwork. And which basically means sewing them all together by hand. So yeah, I'd go at that. I'm not sure that it's something that I'm necessarily gonna, I don't know what I think about the results there. It's not, so you, ha you have it on paper, you cut it out on paper, the smaller one, and then you basically fold it and glue it over the fabric. And then by hand, you sew around the edges. I mean, I can show you if you're interested, but I don't know if I like that hand stitched effect. I think it's just because my hand stitching was looking a bit rubbish. I don't know what you think. And then I don't think I can get the paper out. <laughs> she was like getting the paper out really easily. I don't think I can get the paper out. Well, I think the problem is that the first time I'm doing it, I'm doing it on shapes that are curved and curved shapes. That is very ambitious because that is not easy. So I also had a go at doing them, just sewing them together on the machine. That's a bit puckered, so it's not perfect. But that is easier than that, I think. I don't know. I don't know. That was another attempt. Um, so this one, this was a lot easier because it's all straight lines. And that wasn't doing the English paper piecing. That was doing the paper piecing and trying to sew it. That was just having a play around. But anyway, I just thought I would show you that um, I have figured out what these dies are meant to be for. And I like the idea, like what she had made was amazing. But turns out it's a lot harder than it looks getting those curved edges. Firstly, getting them to fold over and stick onto the paper for the paper one, very fiddly. And for when you're just sewing with a machine, because it's so small, that is really fiddly. If like I thought it was, if it was actually this nice big size, that would be easier, wouldn't it? But there you go, you live and learn. So yeah, that's what I'd show you and I shall speak to you very soon, bye.